Hello everybody, welcome to the Blood Bowl Super League show, episode number four. This time joined by Fatin, the battle brother and pro-elf expert. Um, we'll be doing the same as the other weeks, looking around all the results and uh, fixtures and tables in the league. And don't forget to check out the website, I'll leave the link in the description below that you can see all of the VODs that everyone's made. Um, and you know all the results of the matches and also the fixtures for when upcoming ones will be played. And so yeah, let's get to it. So here we are with a featured match of the week. It's um, Dionysian and his Chaos Dwarves versus Andy Davo and his Dark Elves. Dio won the toss, chose to receive. And uh, there you go. What do you think of the teams, Fatty? Well, um, Davo is playing pretty standard, um, high, uh, pretty standard Dark Elves, but this is the team that he loves to play. So. One wrestle witch, one uh, block witch, um, three blodge, four blodge bitters, and a, um, a, blo a dodge runner, I suppose. It's 11 players, two rerolls. And then Dio is playing with a sure hands bull, which is a strategy which I'm assuming is normal, I guess, in tabletop. Or at least I've heard it is done. Yeah. Um, and then he's got the claw, claw mighty as well with the trough blocker. So. I've played I've played this matchup quite a lot in Champ Ladder at sort of lowish TV, and if they get if they pick up on the shorthand bull, the big if just as we watch this, um, it's actually pretty difficult to get it off them because um, with all the you know they don't use many rerolls and they can just grind it up the field. So he's just missed his pick up, 75% pick up here. We'll see whether would Davo fancies pressuring or not. Picking off picking off the exposed hobble. Um, I really didn't like the claw, mate. He like. It, it doesn't seem so bad in, in theory, but I think it's underperformed in the games because it is stopping you having a guard. Like, in my game so far, my Mighty Blow Dwarf has seemed the worst one, you know? Like, I just, I never care about him getting hit or, or targeted or anything because he's just not a guard guy and I care about the guard guy. It's not the Mighty Blow guy. <laughs> yeah, but Mighty Blow Dwarf is not the same as a Claw Mighty Dwarf. Like, in the Dwarf versus Chaos Dwarf match, a Claw Mighty Chorf could just be a killer, couldn't he? Or an orc match or something like that. Whereas a mighty blow longbeard is uh, kind of just another longbeard, really, and he might get a Kaz here and there, but he might not. So I don't know. Claw mighty just seems a huge amount better than just a random mighty blow dwarf. Mm. But yeah, I know what you mean. He might lose the guard wars. Yeah, I, ju I just don't feel like it is a lot better. That's the that's the problem. That's the problem that I have with it. Like I thought in theory, but uh, at first I thought it was alright, but now I think no, I don't. I don't think I've, I've revised my opinion. <laughs> clearly, clearly, you need to f play a few more bash teams. You know, like just get used to the bash teams or the. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he makes the pick up now, so he's. He... And I, I really don't like the bulls, right? Because they don't have block. They, like you want block and break tackle on them, don't you? And they're both missing both of those skills. So I, I, I don't think, I tend, I, gen, I tend to not like Chaos Dwarf in these low kind of formats anyway. Uh, obviously Dio's a great coach and and he normally, he normally like he's spot on with the meta, you know, normally and stuff. So he thought this was the best and uh, I don't know, I think it's not, like this is fine though, isn't it? It's, it's, a, it's a decent matchup against the uh, Dark Elves. Claw Mighty's targeted when uh, when I played Andy Davo, he relentlessly targeted the Mighty Blow Dwarf. <laughs> oh shit, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, I was... <laughs> I thought, what's up? Okay, you alright there, Fatin? Uh. Yep, I think my computer's just coming back online and stuff. <laughs> Woo! All right, well, I've been talking to myself for ages, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. All right, okay, getting back into this video. All right, what's going on there? Um, I I was just talking about the uh, talking about the meta rather than anything. I was talking about that last game when I played Andy Davo, He relentlessly targeted my mighty blow with his uh, with his blitzers, and he did target the core mighty there. Um, 
because I guess you know they don't want to be out back. Like they don't want to remove players. Like you've pretty much got to remove players, haven't you, against Dark Elves? Because if you don't, they can just wall up and cause you so many problems. Yeah. Um, interesting that he's got like four players around the back. He did that really early, didn't he? He moved players right round so he can sort of surround the cage, I guess. Yeah, interesting. Maybe it's not afraid to expose his, doesn't mind exposing his witches either. Like it, you know, usually you'd maybe try and hide the armor seven witches a little bit, but um, I suppose if he's got claw mighty, doesn't really matter. Yeah, if he's been to claw mighty all the time. Yeah, and I think he was trying to get the get the hobos exposed, which is fair enough, isn't it? If you're fast and you can get like get the hobo robo, if you can stun a stun a chaw, that's good as well. It's a really interesting tactic what Dio does with this hobo. You just watch that hobo for the rest of this half. <laughs> it's just moved him up there, and and he just ignores it. Oh. Uh, that's a great removal there. The best way to out bash dark elves is just wait for them to roll the water. <laughs> There's an now, obvious path through here, isn't there, with this card? Oh. That's two KOs and two two actions. Oh, but yeah, he's the ball's base, so he can't. <laughs> it's not that obvious. Hey, no, it's the hobble. <laughs> it's Jimmy as well. Oh, I like this. I like this hobble a lot. Oh, there's a double skulls. It's turn five, isn't it? That riot at, at the start is... Uh... Put some time pressure on him. Yeah. And the thing is with the carrying on the ball, I like... Carrying on the bull, I suppose, versus elves because elves. If you carry on a hob, especially an unskilled hob, like if you're not, you're not going to spend any points actually putting block on a hobgoblin or sure hands on a hobgoblin. Then, um, you know, if you carry on a hob, then the elves have always got a always got a chance to come in and with block against a skillless hobgoblin and, and sack the bull. So. Much more difficult getting getting dice on a strength four, but you do lose a strength four piece in the fight, and he's kind of struggling to even brawl with the dark elves, isn't he, at the moment? Yeah. Especially because he's one player down, because he's moved that hobgoblin into no man's land. <laughs> like when when on earth is that hob gonna receive a pass from the from the the? And that's what Andy's thinking. Andy's thinking, well, I can pretty much ignore this hobgoblin. Like if he wants to go for a play where he dodges out a bull and then somehow hands off to that hobgoblin up there. Fine, but he's he's making himself play himself player down, I think. Well he's, he can get, bring him back now and chain chain the ball away, can't he? That's that's quite nice. Then he could blitz up here and get forward. He could actually do something with a hobble, it'd take a GFI. But I really like that because this is the horrible thing about the bull carrier is that is that he can just get based every turn and then it gets able to blitz, doesn't it? Doesn't go for that. I like I like that, you know, I liked him coming back and then chaining chaining away. He's just gonna go for the dodge and like he's running out of time, isn't he? He's almost got two. He's removing a lot of Andy's elves. But Andy is okay with that. Because they're mostly just KOs. Yeah. But Andy is not screening, he's actively, you know, bashing. Yeah. Making a dodge there. Yeah, I, he kind of had no choice, did he? This is the, Look at how based up the cage is. Yeah. Yeah, and he hasn't got block, so this is just an uphill if he wants it. Into potentially a 2D. Oh, difficult. Opens with a 1D. Ooh, boy howdy. Yeah, no guard on the elf team, so he can never get any... You know, it can it can be out guarded with a base cage like that quite badly, so. Yeah. One D with block though. Wow, goes for the goes for the witch elf. Is is this a frenzy trap? Yeah it is. <laughs> oh double pals, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> frenzy opportunity if you're space cadet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I like basing that hobgoblin at the back because the hobgoblin is one of the faster players and he doesn't have block. Yeah. So I can't really take a one dice. Yeah, I like that as well. But now, well, let's pause it for a second. Finally, the bull is free, isn't he? Yeah, um, so how do you get forward here then? 
You could just the witch. Or you just blitz the witch, but then because that hob is based at the back, the rest of your team is movement four or on the floor. So well there you go you can reconnect with the hob coming up the front there, so yeah. So he's gonna probably blitz the witch to the left? Yeah, I think so. Stands up that guy just bases. Woo! Oh wow, he's not blitzing the witch. Now if that was a both down, surely he was in trouble, right? Yeah, a lot of trouble, yeah. Like that's the thing, the witch the witch like, even he needed if you a yellow it, there. Yeah, yeah. The, the witch if you just like if you blitz from this angle, then the push her both like she's got wrestle, so yeah, the push all both down these is fine. That yeah, that had to be had to be a power right. A push was no good. Bush was no good and the both down was no good, so I don't like that really. And also he injured the player that he just also hit with Mike. Also he's run forward. Why isn't he back here? <laughs> <laughs> he can just 2D the ball, can't he? On, with, with some twos? Or at least 1D it. He can certainly 1D it, I think. So, I'm not going to then. Wait, let's just... What could he have one D? Could Andy have just one D the ball here? Yeah. Where's his block players? Does he have a block player? He doesn't have a block player far back enough to one D the ball. The, the ball carrier. No, oh, yeah, he could have done. He was like here. He could have gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's eight. his runner, though. Right? No, no, the bl the blitzer could have gone nine in here. Okay. But this is re this is a really nice turn of basing. If you look what what Andy does here, he's got four elves to put in the way, but he puts them in the way in a really nice. Yeah. Set up. Double basing the ball so that you can't be chained away. The two players, the runner mm. from the sideline and the lineman towards the centre protect from any chain shenanigans. Yeah. But what is that ball going to do now? Just hand off. And... I think you have to hand off here, don't you? Yeah. He doesn't go for that, though. <laughs> well, what's what's he doing then? Now what's he gonna do? He's just giving up on the score because there's the counter score yeah, threat now. The scoring threat, yeah. I think you have you got rerolls. You have to hand off back to the ball and then just blitz blitz through the run out to score. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Double G fires. It's weird, isn't it? But look at how many players Davo has on the pitch. At the end of this match, four players at the front, yeah. one player is a scoring threat. So seven, seven elves on the pitch. He has done a lot of attrition. He can't ask for that much more attrition. No, no, yeah, he up board that counts. Yeah, he just gave up on the score. And then he got a score. Could have served him as well. Couldn't he? Could have double pushed him and then, uh, and then served him, <laughs> served the ball. The and ball then, uh, Ball, ball uh, go anywhere. I think that was good aggressive defense from Davo. Kept on basing the ball, helped by the riot. Um, the riot cut down the turns, put a lot of time pressure. And as you said, like just basing the ball carrier with the blodger quite often, as often as he could, meant that the blitz had to be dictated to free the ball carrier more than driving forward. And um, ran out of time at the end there. Yeah, yeah, a good, good solid defense. A very aggressive. Yeah. Which is, is how you'd expect. Now this is... Yeah, so if I'm in the situation, if I have really bad KO rolls, then I think to myself, okay, I'm not going to try and grind it out here against a 11-man chalk team with all of its players and, and the claw mighty of this stuff. I usually just go for a quick score. Yeah. Or I'll, I'll, tr I'll try for a quick squat size and get some KOs back and then and then try and defend properly. Yeah, with three back, he could go up to nine. And, and Dio's down to ten. Dio could stay at t ten or even lose another hop ball, couldn't he? Because the fact you can target... Like, with a fast, agile team, you can target the hop balls, can't you? Like, often bash teams, like, you know, the, my dwarves just end up punching what's in front of you and you can't run around to hit them. But obviously, elves can run around and hit the hop balls. 
I think about putting the Hobgoblin on the side there as the obvious target to Blitz. I mean, he's got the Claw Mighty guy uh, <laughs> hidden. Could have put a Bull on the side there, couldn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like having a Hobgoblin, a Strength 3 skillless Hobgoblin to Blitz. If he'd have put the Bull on the side there, his Bull carrying Bull. Yeah. Like, his Bull carrying Bull, he's already had his offensive drive. <laughs> I mean, maybe he's hoping to get another one, but um, that's armor nine thick skull. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Dio's good, isn't it? Maybe, maybe it was pl his plan was to trick Andy into a quick score so that he would then be able to, you know, like, you no know, two. I was going to say two and grind him one one grind. That doesn't make any sense, does it? But at least get the draw instead of the loss, right? Yeah. If he thinks you're not going to stop, but he's only got seven players. I think you should be trying. Everything you can to stop this, right? And, and maybe win 1 0. I think Dio fancied stopping Davo with yeah. 11 players against 7. 10. He's only got, he's only got 10. Oh, 10 players. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, 10 his players. Kale stayed out as well. But uh, yeah, you'd have thought you would have fancied stopping him, so I wouldn't have given him that easy that easy blitz. No, I, I agree completely with that. But it is difficult like, to think in one minute turns. Like, it is, yeah. I suppose you would have thought about that at half time. You would have thought about like seeing how many KOs back, and while they were setting up, you can have a bit of time to think about yeah. what your strategy for the half is. Yeah, to be fair, it's not easy in one minute turns. <laughs> but look where he blitzes here. He blitzes the witch, practically giving up the score. Yeah. Yeah, weird stuff in it. People are based. That's good. Well. Uh, Blitz is no longer based. Yeah, well, that was a frenzy trap, wasn't it? So two into one, yeah. With wrestle. Yeah. I think it was just too easy to come up the side. I, I think yeah. he should have had the bull on the on the side there. If he wanted to hide his claw mighty, then. But I, or I think we probably would have put the claw mighty on the side there and then had the bull in the center to respond, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I think maybe, maybe you could have even put like the hobble in the middle, right? And I don't know. I don't know. I would, I would, I would have to think about it for more than a minute. <laughs> yeah. But it so, seems, seems a bit too easy to two turn. Like, Dark Elves are not that great at two turning, are they, really? No, no. Um, although we did. Yeah, nice kick, picked it up, had it on the runner, sort of near the, cent near the centre line. Yeah, so now he's back up to 10 players, and Dio's on yeah. 10, so now it's even players. And now it's going to be pretty hard for Dio, I think, because... Yeah. You've got to make all those removals again. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> the cop drop. Weird. Yeah, and all those removals weren't enough last time, uh, but now you've got to make those removals again, and they've got to be enough this time. And he's got to pick up on his short hands ball. Yeah, <laughs> stupid short hands ball. This is a real deep kick as well. That's that's rough, isn't it? Bash teams don't like a really deep kick. Yeah. It looks like he's. He can't do any sort of. Is he. Does he want to get the second ball forward here to be a fast scoring threat or something? No. no why, I, why is he moving his chalk so far forward there? I yeah, I don't. I, he probably just wanted a blitz. He probably just didn't want to not blitz. <laughs> but yeah, this is, this is dodgy, isn't it? Because. I, I like leaving these guys up here because the elves are only so fast, so like this was the area they'd want to go in, isn't it? I don't like the foul. No, I don't like the foul. I, I, would, have, I would have kept him already in there. It's, you're already under quite a lot of pressure, but if he, if he chooses to pile in here, he can. So I'd want to keep the... You know, I would have wanted to keep someone over here, certainly. And yeah, he's going straight for that hobo. What with the rock downing the Chaos Dwarf? I think he's too thin on the... Um... Yeah. Too thin in this area, precisely where he's pissing here, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. Is he, can he get? Dark elves aren't fast enough to base the. Are oh, they are fast? Oh. Base the is, that is that a double GFI? It is a double GFI. Yeah. 
it's, it's just effective, isn't it? It's ju it is just effective basing them because they can't dodge with their balls. Yeah. That's why I kind of hate Chaucer at Lord TV because like the other people tend to have bash teams and if they just mindlessly base you, you get in trouble. <laughs> and like, obviously this isn't mindless basing, this is like good basing. But it's, 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 yeah, it's hard to deal with though, isn't it? I like this block away. No, block him away, see three players up. Well, look at this, right? If he hadn't have moved that Hobgoblin into foul on the line of scrimmage, he would have had a Hobgoblin free at the back to blitz mm. off the dodge, the blodge blitzer and then would have been safe in the pocket on the back on the halfway line here. Mm. He's got nothing to blitz that um, blodge blitzer off with. Well, he, yeah, he's just, got, he's, he's just got to blitz the ball, hasn't he? And move up into the cage, but he hasn't even yeah. moved the cage. What the, what the, oh my God, oh, Dyer, what are you playing at? That's horrible. It, but that but that blitz, that, that, that block, sorry, I would have just, you know, pushed that guy away so he had no place to come back. And he's doing a dodge. Are you serious? Are you serious, Dio? <laughs> oh, get out of town. Just blitz him and move up. Like, you've got to, haven't you? Into a cage. But he hasn't been able to form a cage because he's overblocked. Oh, that's hor that's horrible. What was Dio smoking? <laughs> he played great against me. <laughs> look, at his, look at his upside down face. Turn that frown upside down. <laughs> oh, now he's in all, all kinds of trouble, isn't he? Oh, he really wanted to power there, didn't he? That would have been devastating. What was the chain the chain the chalk off the yeah. mm -hmm. amp? Oh, but it's already it's already devastating to be fair, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty devastating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he's already absolutely dominating, but uh, that would have been probably game over if he'd got the power there. I mean, okay, maybe it already is game over, but it would have been actually game over if he'd got the power. <laughs> yeah, how it works, how it works, gonna. Oh, well, there you go. He didn't need the power. He didn't need the power. He just rolled the dice anyway. Oh, he's only got one reroll left. He's out of rerolls. Makes the handoff. Should have stored those up first, shouldn't he? If he's going to just stand them up. Anyway. Yeah, before he went for the. Before he went for the. Well, I mean, that was weird, actually. He was going for a 3 plus pickup and a GFI and a handoff with one reroll, and he didn't stand those guys up in the centre. Yeah, that's... But that sort of thing can happen in a minute as well. So that's is yeah. what's fun about this competition is that you got some really really good players like Dio and Andy Davo, two of the best, two of the absolute best, and uh, they're not going to play perfect because it is one minute turn. So, um, oh. but yeah, there he goes. Wow, what he should have done there is not is just done that on the one day, right? So that this guy could have moved out of the way. Well, he could have moved up to here afterwards, right? If he'd just done the one day with a garter and got a push, then the hobo could have moved here to cancel the assist, and then he could have blitzed with the uh, other blocker, couldn't he? Yeah. And uh, with good teammates, with with tackle. Yeah, so he blocked his path by standing him up to make that a two D. So that was a bit of a bit of a mistake there, for sure. Um, and the replay is broken, so this must have been when uh, Dio no, conceded. Where he conceded, yeah. So uh... yeah, so Dio conceded, which is fine, right? You know, concede. People, a lot of people yep. don't like conceding in ladder, and a lot of people, you know, obviously, if it was a proper league, uh, like a normal league with pros progression, conceding can be very bad. But here, it's, it's, yeah, you know, it, it's over. It's going to be two 0 um, That was his last throw, guys. Andy is not going to completely spoon it from there, is he? <laughs> <laughs> you would have thought that Andy's probably going to try and surf four players from there and then uh, and then win the game 2-0 anyway but uh, yes. <laughs> yes so wow so it's a good, good game but like um yeah I, the chorf I, I feel like Crucifer with his chorfs would have played that differently I, I, um especially his offensive drive in the second half I think I think Cruz would have I mean uh, Theo's played quite a lot of chorfs. I've seen him play them on stream before and stuff. So, uh, but yeah, was... I was wondering whether Dio was actually trying to go for the win or something. Was he was he trying to go do go really really quickly or like what's his what's his position in the tournament? Was it was it like something like a win? He had a win and a loss, I think. 
So did he feel the draw wasn't going to be enough? Because he was he was making high rolly plays like fouling with the hobgoblin and stuff yeah. and um, moving chorts up the field when he could have he could have played that offense much much more safely by getting some more players back supporting the ball carrier. Yeah, I think I think I think I don't know how you can think you can go for the win there. Like to be honest, it's ten versus ten. Okay. Theo could always think he can go for the win. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, come on, you've got to, you've got to know, haven't you? Like, if he was playing random, uh, you know, five hundred and sixty-two on the CCL, then maybe he can. But not really, not as chores. You just haven't got the time. Like, even even if you knew the guy was terrible, I think it's way too greedy to go for the win there. But the guy isn't terrible, and he's gonna, he's definitely gonna beat you if you try to go for the win there. So yeah. I'd, yeah. I, I didn't I didn't like that at all there from Dio and you know normally he's, I think he's a great player like obviously he's won blitz bit like three times and stuff hasn't he he's, he's brilliant in one minute turns and yeah I think that was he, he made some very uh, strange decisions but there you go who who are we to say if it's right or wrong yeah and they, to be fair like Davo was making some really nice plays really big pressure I really like his defense Davo's defense in the first half basically set up that game yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it was good to good to watch. And then and then Davo's quick score seemed a bit easy. Uh, didn't really need to show much uh, talent to score in two turns with the Dark Elves for that one. And um, yeah, so he meant. I think Davo, his he is, you know, one of the absolute best with Dark Elves. So that's some really good Dark Elf play there. So unfortunately, Inarian and Mr. Page didn't get their game done in time, so there was only one more match, and it was me versus Purple Chest, and uh, I don't know if you saw this one fat in or not? I didn't see this one. I, if I was given a choice of matches to watch, it wouldn't be Dwarfs versus Dwarfs, but you can tell me all about it, Jim. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it was it was pretty good, so I, start, I received, because I thought, you know, I thought at least... At least I won't be down players. I thought if I'm down players on offense against PC, I'm definitely going to lose. So I thought, you know, I'm, whereas I might have banged him out in the first half, I thought let's just let's just be safe, you know. So I received. Ball starts off. The kick goes in my end zone, right in the corner of the field, and there's a riot. <laughs> <laughs> so it takes me like four turns to get a halfway line, <laughs> and then uh, and then you know by that point it was just already hard. I had to commit hard to a side to get anywhere, and uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to break through. And you're uh, playing absolute mirror teams, aren't you? You got yes, exactly the same comps. Exactly the same yeah. teams, yeah. I, I know that feeling when you're playing a bash team, and you're the one that's supposed to be carrying the ball, moving it upfield, and protecting the ball. And all the while, he's got exactly the same team with exactly the same amount of guard just fucking pounding the shit out of each other in the middle of the field. How do you wiggle your way forward from there, from the end zone, yeah. <laughs> in a riot? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was rough. It, like, that was really rough. Uh, and then in the second half, um, he, I, well, you can see he got way more armor breaks than me. I actually made more blocks than him and got more knockdowns than him. Um, so, like, I was actually able to pretty much stop him on, on offense, and like, on his offense. Um, and then there came a turn where I just really didn't know what to do. He, he could kind of go either way, and uh, I chose to stay back in the middle. And then he pushed down one side because he had to, like he couldn't push through the middle. He had to go one side or the other. So I guess I should have shut down one of the sides. Um, and then he ended up pushing, getting enough to pu push down the side. And uh, and then you know there were dice rolled, and he won one nil. So yeah, there you go. Fair, fair play to Purple Chest. Very well played. I mean, like I knew he'd play well, and he wasn't going to make any mistakes or anything. And he, he ran out of time one turn that mattered. But uh, unfortunately, that coincided with a turn of bad dice from me. That, that, that you know, like that happens, doesn't it? As dwarves, you get a turn. Push, where push, you, push, push, skull. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like against other teams, it would be great because you'd get both downs and all the guys would be on the floor. But against dwarves, you're like, oh, I'll just do nothing to your whole team then. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. And, he, yeah. he normally like he's quite a famous PC for picking a side and going quite early, isn't he, on his offense? But I guess if you manage to shut that down until the, the midway through, because he. Uh, you know, I can I can see why that's good because his defense is really strong, and you know, just forcing your way up, getting some territory if you can with dwarfs is is pretty good as well. But yeah, if he if he was looking keeping his options open, then he was um, changing wow. his strategy a little bit. Well, I would say I was like just stopping him. You know, I was really I was really battling hard to like stop him getting forward, 
and yeah. but, and then eventually it just came to the turn six it was and I, I probably should have shut down one of the sides and then he didn't have that much but he did a nice little chain push to get another guy out and then he had enough for like a a sideline cage and then he and then he made so you know dodging a couple of GFIs at the, at the end to, to kind of shut down everything as well on, on turn seven so yeah it was, it was what you'd expect from PC to be honest very good yeah, really tight match sounds like anyway the sort of match that I would be shit at by the way <laughs> if I ever put me in charge of a load of dwarfs to I would not have a have an absolute clue what to do with them so <laughs> Well, there you go. Maybe a good one to watch if you if you like exposing yourself to dwarf mirrors. <laughs> so here's the uh, table. We've got Purple Chest on top with three wins out of three. Andy Dave also with three wins, but with a loss. Uh, Calcium and Iron 2-0-1. Dio with a win. Mr. Page and Arian only played three games uh, because they didn't get it in time. So there you go. So who's still in the running here? How many more games have we got to play? So we've got six uh, games got six, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Davo's one game ahead of people. Um, looking pretty good. Jimmy's still in there. Calcium's in there. Dio's probably looking a bit in trouble, and so is Mr. Page and Arian with the with the with the flings. No no glorious <laughs> fling wins yet so far in this uh, in this group. I'm I'm sure Arian's having fun. He's he's been. Banging out loads of flings on his stream as well, hasn't he? So, uh, yeah, I, I could not take that many stunty matches in a row, but um, he, lo he loves it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he does. And P PC massively in the driving seat, isn't he, with a hundred percent record? So yeah. it's probably uh, Andy, myself, and Calcium battling to battling to join PC in the playoffs, maybe. Yeah, for that second place. Mm. And these are the fixtures for. The week five, we've got PC taken on Dior. Calcium versus Jimmy. This is a huge one. We're both on two wins and a loss. Andy Davo playing his fifth game against Mr. Page and Inarian with the bye. PC versus Dior would be interesting because Dior will want to reclaim some uh, some pride there after this battering from Davo, and uh, he will want to be clawing some of PC's dwarfs. But as you, it'd be interesting to see. What we said at the beginning about you, you like the extra guard there that PC's got, and um, whether that is actually more effective than than the claw mighty of Dio. So I think that's going to be a big one. Um, but the, I think the biggest in terms of the league result will be you, you versus Calcium, which is obviously you're battling it out for um, uh, for the second spot there, probably, or at least a qualifying spot between you two. I don't think both of you two will qualify. No, no. Um, and Davo versus Mr. Page. Can Davo deal with the death roller? <laughs> yeah, maybe not, right? It might just go off on one. <laughs> it might just go off on one. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Dio deserved to at least draw against me. It was it was crazy that I beat Dio. I, I got so lucky on turn 16. So, uh, And, you know, he is really, really good, despite despite making some questionable decisions, maybe, against Andy. Uh, I think that will be a stern test for PC. But who's to say whether they're right or wrong, Jim? Exactly. They were just bald, weren't they? They were just bald, ballsy bald decisions. decisions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they, they might not they might not have been wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so first up from Group A, we've got Kanor versus Shawnee. And uh, I watched this and as you can as you can expect from the 3 0 result, it was pretty much a dicing uh, you know, Kanor just removed loads and loads of Shawnee's players and Shawnee had he 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 was one nil down at the half, and he tried to score on his own drive with about like six players or something. It was just he couldn't even protect the ball. And, what was um, doing the damage? Was it the roger going nuts or the, something or what? The roger was just phenomenal. Yeah, it just it just annihilated his team. <laughs> <laughs> it was glorious to behold. <laughs> And dirty player as well. He's got a dirty player on his team, and uh, the dirty player did some work. And uh, but, you know. It is what it is, isn't it? You still got to win, right? You have still got to win, and uh, obviously Kano then did everything and got the three nil as well for the touchdown difference. Yeah, yeah. that's that's nice, isn't it? Put, push. Surely, surely has a mighty blow tackle on that human team and twelve players, and the humans are fairly, fairly sort of like tough to to 
to remove a lot of, but yeah, I guess that's, that can happen sometimes, can't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I would back humans, like, every time to, to like, to cause Skaven problems, but ultimately, Skaven are still on Agility 4, aren't they? And humans aren't. So, like, yeah. even in the games where you kind of fancy humans with their tackle mighty blow and their guard spam, and you think things are looking pretty good for them, uh, they're still humans, and they can still fail things, can't they? And the second game was Gadenic versus Fatin. Hello, yours truly here. Well, I've got one conclusion from this match, uh, Jim, and uh, that is that I don't like Gadenic. Uh, <laughs> in fact, did you realise that I'm actually currently banned in Gadenic's Twitch chat? The, 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 the chat between us in this game just got so toxic that he decided to ban me from his Twitch channel. So, ah. Uh, what an Australian he is! Now it's like uh, this. This game was really. I really loved this game. This was really good fun. Um, I went on. He put me in on offense. I tried to grind it out in eight turns. Rolled a horrible first action snakes at some point, but just about got away with it. Rolled, rolled a lot of two plus GFIs and stuff um, to score in eight turns. He didn't score his one turner. And then on offense. Uh, things were looking pretty even here. I hadn't taken too much damage and Nick went for the win. He went and did a pr fairly quick offense and I wasn't too worried because I thought I could win it myself. I was like, okay, we'll just um, you go for a bit of damage. I had Mighty Bow Tackle as well, so I didn't, I couldn't really get to the ball and I couldn't really put on too much pressure and I, I didn't want to lose a lot of players trying hard to defend. Yeah. Too much because I I knew he was going for a sort of like a quick score, and then he gave me four turns. I had ten players, I think. I had all three of my re rolls, and he defended really nicely, and I just failed a critical dodge at a critical time, and he turned me over. So it was it, like right up until the last turn fifteen, I think, either of us could have won it, and I was feeling quite confident on turn fourteen. Um, so, so yeah, it was a really interesting one. Absolutely well played by Nick. Um, but he, he did like throw the dice in the air and say, right, I want to win this one, and uh, he did. So, <laughs> but it was it was a really good one. We were both we were, we were both playing quite fast in in one minute turns, and um, uh, felt I felt like I was doing okay. Um, I was relying quite a lot on instinct of. You know, playing a lot of games on elves so to know know what my moves were going to be, and yeah, and I think of it course. was a tight game. Of course, Kadenik has played Lords of Elves as well, so he probably had that instinct of what you were going to do as well, didn't he? Yeah, we talked about it during the game actually, and he said he's he's played so many more elves than humans. He didn't feel like he had that sort of instinctive. He felt he was struggling a little bit with humans to to get the instinctive idea about what to do. But um, he's 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 quite good at this game even if I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> and the final one is Rick, the, the, the madman with his augers <laughs> against Crucifer. Unbelievable result. And uh, you watched this one as well, didn't you? I did watch this one because I, I, I wanted to see what uh, a fellow pro-off player like uh, Crucifer would do against Rick's ogres. Um, and he took a completely different strategy to me. I thought it was really interesting. He went and chose to go on offense he said on stream, I was watching his stream back, uh, he said, oh, I love to score quick on with Pro Elves, which is like the opposite of what I do. And he did score in two turns. And then Rick's dice were not exceptional. Like he was getting beeped on every foul that he did for her stun. Got a lot of stunts he sent off. His block dice weren't amazing. Crucifer's L's were holding up. But somehow he just still managed to march forward with a block ogre without ever giving away a two dice or even a one dice with Wrestle. He never had, Cruz never got that at all. And I guess enough L's were being stunned or, um, you know, they weren't being removed, but they were kind of being boxed in and Cruz doesn't have tackle or mighty blow. So the, the stunties were kind of mostly holding up. So um, that meant that just, uh, Rick just cruised forward and managed to score on turn eight and make it one, one at half time. Pretty much did the same thing. Like, Cruz only got some uphill wrestle action twice on the ball. And wow. one the one time when the uphill wrestle actually worked, 
um, it scattered onto another ogre who caught it on a six. So <laughs> um, it was that there's a bit of luck for Rick, but like, who who can turn over the Blood Bowl Jesus? Who can who can defeat him in the mood he's in at the moment? Yeah, Zinx no, block no, ogres are not not to be sniffed at. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no one's done it yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder whose turn it will be to try and... So, Nick's played him, um, Rick's played him, sorry, uh, Cruz has played him, I've played Rick. I don't think, I don't think anyone's managed to, uh, managed to defeat him yet, so... No, Who and, can stop the juggernaut? And he qualified for the blitz pit in the, with his build, okay. so he's, yep, he's, I know. he's like undefeated in seven games. <laughs> I think it's pretty strong, actually. I mean, it's very, re the blocking is very, very reliable. The dodging is very, very reliable. So if you can if you can block and you can dodge on one in thirty sixes, um, all you have to do is use your rerolls on crucial um, boneheads. So um, and, you, and you just try and avoid too many crucial boneheads, and you just keep your keep your team fairly solid. Oh, and and pickups by the way, he's made he's made quite a lot of pickups. He didn't make every pickup, but. Yeah, pickups at the beginning of your drive. If you if you fail a pickup yeah. at the beginning of your drive, you're probably screwed. But um, yeah. against elves, you are anyway. But uh, yeah, if you, if you make the pickup, get it in the middle, then you don't have to use that many rerolls. And um, uh, and and also, he's been he's he fouls a lot. Rick does foul a lot with non dirty player uh, snotlings. Sometimes <laughs> it pays off, but in this match, it wasn't really paying off at all for him. So. You can't say you just lucked it out with the with the fouling and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good match to watch. Really good match to watch. If, you, if you'd like to watch it on the YouTube sometime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, glorious. So here's the table. We've got Kanor and Rick, both of them undefeated uh, at the top of the table. Unbelievable. Uh, Elliot with all losses. Poor guy. Not even scored a touchdown. And then, yeah... <laughs> You've got uh, Fatten and Gdynik, of course, both on one one one, and that's why I guess Nick went for that, went for the win in that in that game where it was probably it was pretty suicidal to go for it, right? But he somehow got it. Unbelievable. Yeah, I think I think it was less than fifty fifty. So I mean, should be if I'm on offense, but yeah, that, he needed to go for it, and he got the got the point, so that puts him on third at the table. So really, I think it's between the top three. Um, but Crucifer's got an extra game in hand here, hasn't he, on this table? Yeah, so. he's got a game in hand yeah. on Nick here, yeah, so he could go. So I, th I think if you've got two losses, you're probably out of the running. So me, me, Shawnee, and Elliot probably out. But yeah, so Crucifer, Nick, Rick, and Kanor. Um But Kanor's in the driving seat, definitely. Um, and he's still got a couple of couple of good matches to play, but he's been playing really well. And his team's been working really well. Yeah. Block Roger and stuff, so... Block Roger, dirty player. Um... Yeah. And, a, and, a, and a tackle tackle blitz that's so yeah yeah very impressive very impressive and next week's fixtures we've got Fatin versus Cruz Shawnee versus Rick and Elliot versus Gadenik <laughs> I am really looking forward to playing Cruz but um, it's going to be a, a pro elf mirror match um, and Maybe different strategies as well, so uh, I think that should be really, really good fun. I've played Crucifer many times in Champ Ladder, usually versus Pro's versus his Chorfs, but uh, I think we have made we have played one Pro off Mirror before, so. Nice. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be good fun, and uh, 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 love, love talking and watching Crucifer as well. Um, Shawnee versus Rick can short. I mean, you would think somebody can beat Rick, and if anybody could do it, it would be Shawnee. The human team is quite well equipped, but um, maybe nobody can stop the juggernaut. Eliod needs to get his get needs to get his game in gear. Get those get that orc team running up against the Australian. <laughs> and uh, I think Eliod's been pretty unlucky in some of his games. He's, he's not had the best of uh, the best of run of the dice, so. No. Could go either way that last one, I think. Orcs versus humans, I think traditionally you'd go for orcs, wouldn't you? But um You would, yeah, I think so, yeah. But yeah, it is the run of the dice and, and you know, especially with orcs, like they're they're paying for the armor nine, aren't they? So if if then if they're getting outbashed or they're not outbashing their opponent, then they look pretty bad actually, don't they? You know? So like mm. I, think I think they are at the mercy of the dice more more so than like, you know, 
all the other teams really. Yeah, he does regret his team sort of like build. I think. Um, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure he, he likes the build as much as he thought he would like it when he when he started the tournament. So we'll we'll see see what happens. Uh, but yeah, I think Elliot's uh, playing for fun, but he's uh, he's a great guy as well. So he'll be looking to galp galp Nick this week. I think. <laughs> yes, and he may well do it. So that's everything. It should be a great week five. Uh, thank you very much, Fatin, for joining us. Very welcome, Jim. We're getting used to talking in the commentary booth here, and um, yeah, it's been uh, it's been a really fun week. So uh, I've been on half term this week, so um, I've had a bit of bit of time to watch some of these games, and uh, yeah, really enjoying my blood bowl at the moment. Glorious. And thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic. <laughs>